Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're going to have a very quick look at the heart motif on knives and on weaponry. Um, this is by no means exhaustive, but it's, I've got three pieces here and uh, I thought it was a moment to actually talk about it because I do get questions. So basically, we've got three very different articles. Different time periods. So we've got an eating knife. This is the earliest one here, um, 14th, 15th century, uh, with a... A lovely little heart inlaid it's just actually cut through the handle set through lined with with uh, brass there again you might think that that is a woman's knife it's got a heart on it oh, we'll talk about that we've got a 17th 18th century dirk scottish dirk nice long evil everything you want in a dirk it's got hearts cut through on the pommel cap here just little decorative elements and then we've got this Early 16th century German longsword from the Wallace collection, the, the A479. Um, the sword itself, nothing on it particularly. Pretty thing. But I've made a scabbard for it. There is not a scabbard to match this sword in the museum, but this is one that's in the right sort of style. But what I've chosen to do is I've got hearts all cut out through the, through the lockets and the hangers and the shape, um, with some punch work around the hearts here as well. Now, in the modern context, what you're going to think is, well, that's feminine. Um, to use some colloquial slang words on the street, not very PC, but it's wussy, it's sissy, it's girly, right? It's got hearts. That is not what it was about. So, so hearts are a common motif, um, I'm guessing, going way back into antiquity, but certainly as a border filler uh, for manuscripts and in churches and uh, things like that. Um, bits of furniture, just painted furniture, really since the time of courtly love, so uh, the 13th century, 14th century. And then also it appears on weapons as well, and it's, it's a symbol for uh, fidelity, trust, love, spirituality, all the, the good things in life that you want as a knight. Um, and that's what it's about. It, it's, it's, it's a symbol of goodness and of purity and of love. It's not wussy. It's not, it's not feminine. It's, it's, it's other. So you can't imagine a soldier in the modern day and age, you know, the crack troops, like the equivalent of a, a household knight. You know, you can't imagine a, a Navy SEAL or an SAS soldier, um, you know, with, with hearts on his uniform or on his weaponry. He doesn't have that, but he has a different look. So the modern soldier, he has a look which is like, you know, tactical. It's like, I'm, I'm like, black and evil looking and and I've got spiky bits and, uh, and and fins on it you know that's the language of a modern soldier well the language of a chivalrous knight is about power and about being seen and about um, color and wealth and and all these things and part of that is is what you want to portray which is that I am a knight of who's skilled in courtly love and and I am pure and I'm spiritual and I'm I have all the good things in life, and that is what the heart is about. So you see it on weapons like this, you see it on a sword, you'll see it on little eating knives, man or woman, there's nothing feminine about this just because it's got a heart on it. You'll see it on a Highland clansman's uh, Scottish dirk um, in the 18th century or 17th century. You see it continuously through, and you'll see it on weapons, and you'll see it on cathedral sides, and you'll see it everywhere. It is not a feminine symbol, it is a heart and everything that it presents.